Thank you. Now, you know whose name I'm about to forgive you. It is the name of uh, Taylor Swift, which is on the lips of almost every political commentator at the moment, as well as it is on the lips of all Swifties who are constantly defending her and saying how great she was. I had Tommy Lara on last night um, who said, actually, you know, I think uh, Taylor is such a brilliant woman, such a great example of American sort of femininity and entrepreneurship. She wouldn't be stupid enough to remember to endorse Joe Biden twice. I mean, I, would, I was going to make the exact same argument. You're seeing multiple Hollywood celebrities you know, take back their criticism of Trump. Most recently, it was Snoop Dogg. Yeah. And Snoop Dogg, I think, like, had made a music video where he pretended to assassinate the guy. And all of a sudden, he's saying he respects this man and this individual. Also, Taylor is young and in love. She's chasing the D, Mike, and I'm not talking about defense. Her focus is <laughs> oh. elsewhere. And with the GOP making these kind of crazy conspiracy theories i think it's almost the streisand effect where they've inadvertently you know they've made it look like she is endorsing him a second time by starting this conversation when the reality is i don't think she ever anticipated to do that no i wonder if that's just all uh, what's been cooked up here joe because you know i mean there's no reason why taylor swift needs to get involved in politics because she's so rich She's so incredibly popular around the world. You know, she's on a tour at the moment. She's coming to Britain, I think, um, very shortly. Um, why would she bother? Why bother? Michael Jordan, I think, once said that Republicans buy sneakers too. Uh, meaning that, you know what, if I get involved here, I'm alienating half yeah. my audience. Now, right. I'm sure at some point she'll make some sort of statement, put out some sort of video on TikTok saying how important it is to protect women's rights or something like yeah, that. Yeah. But will she go all the way and, and say, I endorse Joe Biden? Probably not. And, and here's the thing. I'm not sure what kind of impact it would have even if Taylor Swift decided to endorse Joe Biden. Here's what I mean. And, and look, let me be clear, by the way. I understand Taylor Swift is the biggest solo, solo star on this planet since Michael Jackson. The heiress tour, the highest grossing of all time, $1 billion. Yeah. NFL ratings saw huge jumps, and she isn't even on the field, of course. Right. But who are Taylor Swift fans ultimately in overwhelming proportions? They are either teenage girls who cannot vote, or they're probably Democrats already. So it's not like she's going to take some sort of Trump supporter and say, you know what, just because I like, uh, I don't know, take it off or uh, give, give you some lover, uh, and then therefore I'm going to vote very, now for Joe I'm Biden. Very impressed, Joe, with your, to. I'm very impressed with your knowledge of Taylor Swift's songs. Absolutely I brilliant. have a 10 year old girl. <laughs> I have a 10 year old absolutely. daughter. Trust absolutely me. Absolutely right. Learned. I'm not sure I could name any of them. But, um, but Kinsey, you know, I mean, it's very funny, isn't it? You see, funnily enough, talking about. Um, you know, endorsements from from um, various different famous people. You know, we, we usually do every single time there's a US election, somebody plays a song that somebody doesn't like. I remember uh, Bruce Springsteen didn't like Born in the USA being made. Um, I saw, you might not know the Smiths, which is a Manchester band here. Um, apparently, they've been playing some Smith songs at some Trump rallies, and, and the guy... Um, uh, from the Smiths is not very happy about it, and he's going to try and stop them from playing them. We get this every four years, don't we? Oh, I can't remember. I don't know who sings We're Not Gonna Take It. I know he's geriatric, but apparently he's mad at Carrie Lake for playing that at her yeah. rallies. I, it's every year. But that's a great point, celebrity endorsements. And we're all, you know, shaking in our boots over who Taylor Swift is going to endorse. The reality is um, that Hillary Clinton had more celebrity endorsements than I could ever list off to you right now in 2016. Every time she had a, a rally, Katy Perry would show up. Uh, the Kardashians endorsed Taylor Hillary Clinton in 2016, Kanye was appalled, but they did. Um, and, you know, I, I think that it's, it's going to take more this time around. And also, I would argue that, uh, you know, th the Republicans are worried about th that younger demo, the Taylor Swift demo. It, it, it's a drop from 8% of Gen Zers that pr plan to vote this upcoming election because right. they're le they're tired of voting for the lesser of two evils. They don't even plan to participate. Right. So um, uh, it takes more. It's going to take a lot more this time around than celebrity endorsements. Yeah, I wonder if, if that's the case. Uh, to come back to you, Joe, um, we have a problem in this country with low voting, particularly midterms. You know, people just get so fed up they don't want to bother doing it. And there's a pretty good chance that our election this year for Prime Minister is going to be a pretty low turnout as well. Um, is that an issue uh, in the US for this election? Yes, absolutely, because you have two candidates that are generally unpopular. They're popular with their base, particularly Donald Trump. He has the most loyal base uh, supporters that we've seen uh, for any 
politician in modern history. Just ask Nikki Haley or Ron DeSantis or yeah. Mike Pence and all these people that just tried to run against him. Uh, Joe Biden doesn't have as much of a base, but in the end, Democrats tend to come out and vote. So, yeah, uh, we, we should have 70, 80 percent of the population voting, but it's barely over half. And you would think with all the important things going on and so many people's lives being impacted, that more people come out to vote, but they just don't trust government, re regardless of whether it's Republican or Democrat, to get in there and do the right thing. Instead, they see them as just folks that want to get in just for power and control. And by the way, it was Dee Snyder and Twisted Sister uh, that saying, uh, we're go. not going to take it. I'm old enough to remember that, unfortunately. I was young, but it was a good song. <laughs> yes, indeed. Absolutely right. Um, and finally, uh, just one final question about Nikki Haley. Um, the, Ca the Carolina primary is coming up soon. Is she expected to drop out before that happens? No, she'll stay in probably because it's her home state. So she'll at least uh, fight and die on that hill. Uh, but in the end, she's down four or five touchdowns to use uh, tra Travis Kelsey a type of reference to NFL. Uh, and then she'll have to drop out because there is no path for her. It will be Donald Trump versus Joe Biden as it stands now. And now we're going to have, Mike, the longest general election season in the history of this country because usually at least you get to May or June before you find a nominee. We'll, we'll have our guys in, in uh, February, so strap in and get ready for some real ugliness. <laughs> yeah, I bet it's going to get pretty nasty. Joe Concha, thanks very much indeed. Kinsey, back to you. Um, is the Taylor Swift romance um, the thing that, uh, that is kind of occupying all the front pages of the celebrity magazines? Because it certainly seems, as Joe says, to, uh, to get the football fans excited. I have never been, like, living vicariously so hard through two people that have nothing to do with my life. I mean, since Edward and Bella from the Twilight Saga, I am in it to win it. I'm so committed, and I'm ashamed of myself, Mike. I need to take a bath every time I log off of Twitter or Instagram after reading about them. I need to, I just, I need to bathe. Yeah. I mean, it is funny, isn't it, how one woman can become suddenly such a focus for, for everybody all over the world. I mean, she was making news in Brazil, in Argentina, you know, everywhere she goes. Um, she can't seem to get away from the, uh, uh, you know, leading... Even when she went to the Golden Globes, I mean, that was the only story in town was what Taylor Swift was whispering to the people on her table. And that's why I don't necessarily think she wants to get involved in this election cycle because she has such good PR these days. And she is, you know, she's a Brit Brittany Mahomes. People couldn't stand her last season. She right. was, uh, you know, bullied online. And Taylor has elevated her. Taylor seems like a girl's girl. She is very smart when it comes to marketing. She's a very hard worker. And I do think that she is a good role model for young women. And she deserves all the, all the positive success and, and feedback that she gets. I mean, next thing you know, Meghan Markle will be making friends with her. Well, you know, she tried to get... Oh. Megan tried to get Taylor on her <laughs> podcast, wrote her a handwritten note, and Taylor declined. Oh, really? I like her yes. even more now. Wow. That's excellent. Good piece <laughs> of... Very good piece of intelligence. Thank you, guys. Well, very played. Uh, talking about Taylor Swift, talking about Joe Biden, talking about Donald Trump. It's all happening.